All right, how's it going, everybody? Uh, in this video, we'll be talking about completing the square. So I've said there it's like a sledgehammer to solve quadratic equations. So I'll, I'll sort of show you what I mean here in a minute. Um, the learning targets of this video are very simple. There's only one thing uh, I want you to take away here, and that's how to solve any quadratic equation using this technique. Okay, and what I really should say is how to solve any quadratic equation by hand. Um, so now, and notice that I put a little why statement, um, sort of like, like why, why do you need to solve quadratic, quadratic equations? And like first, um, I made a video about solving equations, so hopefully you watched that video and, and got some sense of it. But you also might be thinking like, well, hey, you know, nowadays, um, you know, isn't the whole point of computer algorithms and numerical methods to be able to solve equations to do these sort of computations on the computer? And you are totally right. Um, the thing is, not all of the education world has caught on to this. So you still have, like on, I put their SAT preparation, you still have lots of questions on the SAT that have to, you know, that involve solving quadratic equations by hand often, right? So, um, and you might also see solving quadratic equations in other math classes or engineering classes or science classes. So, you know, while this skill, um, you know, just from a purely applied perspective is less useful, um, you still do see it um, in in contexts in academic contexts, which you'll you'll encounter. Um, now, having said all that, the flip side is actually I think this method is really quite elegant. It's a very clever kind of creative method that um, that that I think um, it's it's very visual. And so I, I said they're an elegant method. Um, so I think there is some some sort. So if you if you like mathematics. This is a nice a nice method. Now, I'm not going to talk about all that sort of pretty elegant stuff in this video. I'm going to um, I'll post a, a link to another video where I I show where this method comes from. For now, it's just going to be sort of a, um, a procedure you can use to, as I said, a sledgehammer to just sledgehammer any quadratic equation. Someone gives you a quadratic equation. You can throw this method at it. Boom, knock it out. You solved your SAT problem correctly. OK, so that's kind of the point. Um, but I did want to point out, like, um, you know, that this is actually really an elegant method, even though it's um, it's a little procedural. Although it's actually it's only like two or three steps. So, um, well, anyway, let's jump into this. So first of all, I want to do a little recap. Right. So there there are many ways to write down a quadratic. Right. So here I've I've used the distributive property and I've, I've given this visual visual. Remember, quadratics change like the area of rectangles. Um, or area which has two dimensions like like length and width or height and width excuse me and notice in this picture right so I'm going to match up the picture to the algebra over here it's like saying you have a box that's x plus three units across and x plus three units up and down and so its dimensions are it's a square because it's the same um, distance across as it is um, tall right so if I multiply x plus three times x plus three if I multiply the height and the width that's going to be x plus 3 quantity squared and that's going to give me the area and notice by breaking the um, square up into these pieces um, i get the standard form of the algebra right x by x is x squared 3 by x is 3x um, and when you add up all these pieces in the middle i get two equivalent ways to represent the same quadratic pattern okay so this should be review if not make sure to watch the video on the distributive property but here's the thing with two different ways to represent the same pattern, each is going to have its own pros and cons. And in, in the context we're talking about here, when you actually have to solve a quadratic equation, which one is easier to use? So I've written, like, again, I took the same thing, x plus 3, the same quadratic, x plus 3 quantity squared, and now I've given you an equation to solve. I say, when is this quadratic equal to 16? And now I'm showing here both forms that we have from the previous page, the black form and the purple form. and which form is going to be easier to use when solving this equation, right? So they each have their pros and cons. And in this case, maybe you see it already, the black form is going to be much, the factored form is going to be a lot easier to solve than the standard form. And the reason really is, and I'll, I'll d dive into this in a second here, but you can just straight up take the square root because this is like a number squared. So I can just take the square root of it and that goes away. And the square root of 16 is four. And then you're almost done with solving the equation already. This, on the other hand, is a little bit messier. 
So let's look at this. Here's the easy way. I have x plus 3 quantity squared, which is really just saying like some number squared is 16. Well, how do you get rid of a square? You use a square root, right? So the, the thing that undoes squaring, right, to get to get from the area of the square to its side length, you, you take a square root, right? So to get rid of this quantity squared, I just square root it. And if I do something to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. Now, hopefully you, you already know how to solve this, this type of equation from Algebra 1. Um, I'm assuming you do for the purposes of, of this video. But anyway, we square root each side, right? And the square root and the square cancel out. So on the left, you're just left with the x plus 3. Don't forget your plus and your minus solution here. The square root of 16 is 4. And then you're left with this equation, x plus 3 equals either plus 4 or minus 4. Of course, algebra 1 says get the x on one side, get the numbers on the other. So I get rid of this plus 3 by subtracting 3. And that leaves me with the two solutions, 1 and minus 7. Be sure to pause the video here to make sure you can walk through this equation on your own. I'm going quickly here because I'm assuming you can already do it. So press pause and make sure each step makes perfect sense and, and how you get these two solutions. Again, if you plug in 1, you get 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 squared is 16, that checks out. If you plug in minus 7, you get minus 7 plus 3 is minus 4, and that thing squared is plus 16. So these are the correct answers. All right. Now, all that said and done, we, we, we did a few steps from Algebra 1, really like, let's see, 1, 2 steps, uh, 3 steps, um, all from Algebra 1 to get from the original equation to the answer at the bottom. And the problem is with the other form, with the standard form, again, it's, it's a, a different representation of the same pattern, but here it just doesn't work as well. All the stuff you learned in Algebra 1 all of a sudden fails, right? Algebra 1 says get the numbers on one side and the variables on the other. So let me start by maybe moving this 9 over to the other side. That gives me x squared plus 6x equals 7. But now here's the problem. I'm stuck with this x squared and this 6x, and there's just nothing to do. If I tried to, say, take a square root like I did in the last one, the problem is I'm taking the square root of the x squared and the 6x, right? It's not just saying take the square root of one number squared, which cancels. It's like the square root of something plus something else, and I get just a big mess here. So there's really nowhere to go from this point. You can't somehow cancel out all these x's like we did in, in the previous problem, right? Um, so so that, that representation is hard. And the thing to take away here is how you represent your quadratic function or your pattern um, in the context of equation solving by hand can make it easier or harder to work with. So the whole point here is standard form in general is going to be hard to work with. If I asked you to find the values of x which satisfy this equation. This might be pretty challenging to do here. Um, but the whole point of the method that we're about to do right now is that if you use this method called completing the square, it's going to make everything easier. So for example, if I started out with this purple equation, if I use the completing the square method, I'll get down to this stuff in black, and this is much easier to solve. Again, why? Because in the black equation, uh, I have some number squared, so all I have to do is square root each side and then finish solving using just basic stuff from Algebra 1. The purple equation, I can't just square root each side to get rid of the x squared, right? I want to just get x equals something, and when you have an x squared in there, you're going to have to square root, but uh, I can't just square root the x squared plus 5x and get this all to cancel. It's just a mess. Okay, so here are the steps for the met for the um, procedure, completing the square. And as I mentioned before, it, it really is an elegant method, and, um, and make sure to check out um, the other video where I talk about where it comes from, um, if you're interested. Okay, but really there's three steps, um, so it's pretty simple. Okay, I just do these three things and boom, I set up my equation and I can knock it out. Okay, so let's look at the three steps, step A, B, and C, and let's look at them with an example. So solve the equation x squared plus 8x equals 25. I've written it in purple because, again, this is kind of the hard, the hard form, uh, the standard form of the quadratic. Um, of the quadratic. So I'm going to rewrite this x squared plus 8x using the, the three steps, and then it's going to make it easier to solve, where I'll just take a square root, basically. OK, so what are the three steps? Step A, the first step, take half of the coefficient on the x term. So if I look um, in, my, in my equation here, x squared plus 8x, well, that's an 8. So if I take half of 8, I get a 4. Now the next thing I do is I take what I got here, which is 4, and I square it. 4 squared is 16. 
Okay, so now I have these two numbers, and these are the two numbers that are relevant. I now plug them in. I take the 4, which is what I got from step A, and I put it in where that A is. And I take the 16, which I got from step B, and I put it in where that B is. And when I do this, I get this nice black equation here. Again, the purple thing and the black thing are exactly the same, and you could use the distributive property to work this out, right? But um, the 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 idea is like the black thing is going to be easier to solve because it'll just be the I'll just take the square root of this number, whereas the purple thing has an x squared and an 8x, and I can't just get the like single x equals something. Okay, so let's look at if um, so. There's kind of recapping what I just said. You start with the purple thing, which looks hard to solve. You complete the square, and you get it set up in a nice much simpler way to solve the black thing there. Okay, and here, here are the steps for solving it. Um, I'll go through this quickly. Make sure you pause the video and, and work this out on your own. But uh, we have a minus 16. And again, algebra 1 says get all the numbers on the same side, the variables on the other side. So I add a 16 to each side. Now I have some, some quantity squared equals 41. And how do I get rid of the square? I square root each side. And then you go on the next step and you solve, you get these two answers over here, which if you don't like the radical square root notation, you can throw it in your calculator to get a decimal. Okay, let's look at another example. So suppose you're asked to solve the equation x squared plus 9x equals 37. Um, let's just use the method again, right? Because again, I can't just straight up square root this thing. I can't take the square root of each side. I don't get anything nice. Um, you know, the x's are already on the left and the numbers are on the right, so my usual algebra 1 stuff isn't working, so I use the method. Okay, if I take half the coefficient on the x term, well, half, well, 9 is the, the coefficient on the x, right, and half of 9 is 4.5. Okay, now the next step says to square what I just found. So if I do 4.5 squared, and if you're, you're good with mental math or you're, um, you got a calculator handy, 4.5 times 4.5 is 20.25. And now I have the two main numbers that I need to get the quote unquote easier form to solve. I just drop the 4.5 in for the A and the 20.25 in for the B, and I set set up my equation to solve. Okay, so here, here's what we get when we, we do this out. I go from x squared plus 9x equals 37 to this, um, this thing in black. And now I'm not going to go through all the steps to solve this, but like it's just your basic um, algebra one steps, right? I have here numbers on the left and a number on the right, so I want to get the numbers together and the variable on the other side, so I can start by moving the 20.25 over. And then you have the nice thing here where I can just square root each side because I have this thing all squared. It's like saying a number squared. I can just take the square root to get rid of the square, and you'll be left with x plus 4.5 equals whatever, and then you, you finish solve. Okay. So that's, um, that's basically it. That's the method. Um, in summary, when you're solving a quadratic equation, not every way that you represent that, that um, quadratic are easy to work with when, when um, trying to solve an equation, right? So you can use this method, complete the square, to rewrite any equation in an easy way. And really what I mean by easy is like you can just use the basic principles from algebra one, getting the variables on one side, the numbers on the other, and then taking a square root to, to finish up solving it. So that's what I mean by easy. The steps to complete the square are really, um, there's really only these three steps. You take half of that coefficient on the x term, you square that, and then you drop those two numbers in the appropriate places. And um, that's, that's all she wrote. So thanks for listening and have a good one.